Hello everyone, this is Meenakshi Ramesh from TappyWayToHealing.com. Today I have a good friend and a guest. Um, I'm going to have a conversation with her. Her name is Christine Jensen Smith. And um, I know Christine from my business mentoring group. So she was, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you say it, maybe a colleague <laughs> and a friend and also an EFT, a certified EFT practitioner. So I'm so excited to have her on my channel today and introduce Christine to the audience. I have Christine's bio here. So before uh, we have a conversation, I want to uh, go through, um, I, I'll be reading Christine's bio. And today's topic uh, focus is going to be about bark flower essences. Uh, that's the focus of this um, interview slash conversation. But I do have to say that I'm in awe as I was reading uh, Christine's bio because Christine is certified in so many healing modalities. And um, she's a wonderful um, EFT practitioner because I've personally had some sessions with her. So she's awesome. All right. So over to Christine's bio. There is nothing more inspiring for Christine than watching a client transform into their brightest, biggest, brightest, true self. So here are some of the credentials that she has. Bachelor of Arts from University of Colorado. She's certified in Jin Shin Jutsu. I hope I'm saying that right. Christine has also completed her levels one and two of Nelson Bach Flower Essence Training in 1997. She's also completed three-day intensive flower essence training with the Flower Essence Society of America in 1997. Christine is also certified in psychic reading and healing training with Psychic Horizons. She's an ordained minister with the Church of Inner Light. She's also completed matrix reimprinting training in 2011, which is an advanced form of EFT. And she's also a certified level two EFT practitioner from AMET, which is Association for the Advancement of Meridian Energy Techniques. So these are her credentials. Along with that, she's also recently certified as an intention-based energy process practitioner. Christine lives in Boulder, Colorado with her husband and two furry kids. Um, I do want to add um, a little bit from her bio, which was very interesting. Christine has suffered feeling the conflict between what she knew was true and wanting to fit in and get along. I can relate to that so much, Christine. <laughs> she has found herself stuck, lost and unsure. And sometimes this can sound very familiar to many of us. So she was convinced that this clarity in her soul's voice and it never leads us in the wrong direction. What, she, what I meant is, I'm kind of summarizing the bio. Christine found her clarity in her soul's voice and it really led her in all the right directions. She discovered that being wholly herself was the key to everything. There is nothing more exciting to Christine than to help others come back to center and tap into their deep wisdom and gifts. Christine brings a gentle, compassionate presence to her clients, knowing that loving acceptance is the most healing force of all. Christine sees her clients in her office locally in Boulder, Colorado, and she also works worldwide via Zoom. That was a beautiful bio of Christine and um, by the end of the interview she'll be sharing her information, contact information and please look for uh, more details in the description box. Now over to Christine to talk and introduce our audience to Bark Flower Essences. Wonderful. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> ah, um, well, I wanted to talk just briefly about how I got interested in flower essences. And it was when I was pregnant with my daughter, who's now 38. So it's been some years. And I was seeing an acupuncturist at the time. And he, I can't even remember what he gave me, but he gave me this little brown bottle to take. And 
he didn't label it or anything, which I, I now I, I would love to have known what he gave me, but I took it home and I started to take the drops. And I remember saying they're like fairy drops. It just felt really magical what I was taking. And um, I, I, I know it was helpful, but I can't remember much more than that. But I just, I was drawn to that, the energy of it. It just felt so um, just magical, whatever I was taking. And so I started to read about the essences. And then when my daughter was little and growing up, I used them quite a bit. They're very user-friendly. Um, I just remember giving her things for homesickness, um, fears in school, if she was having a test or something coming up, I would give her a rescue remedy, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, but I used them quite a bit and they were really, really super helpful for um, just raising my daughter. So that's how I got really interested in them and just kept reading and studying and taking classes. And now I use them for myself and our pets in the house and my husband when he'll take them and, <laughs> um, and uh, clients. So they're wonderful resources to have. Awesome, awesome, Christine. Thank you for sharing your story. It's very inspiring. And, you know, one of the questions that I was going to ask was, can the flower essences be used for, for children? And from you already answered that because you've been using that, you've used that with your own daughter when she was very young. Absolutely. So which is, which yep. is really great. Yeah. Yeah. They are, um, they're, they're, um, you, they're very subtle. Mm -hmm. um, so they can be used with medications. You don't, they're very, very, they go, they fit with anything you're doing and everything you're doing. And so they're very gentle. They're very subtle. So children, definitely, you can even use them up for your plants, <laughs> um, mm. pets. Uh, of course, children are just wonderful to use them because they, they're so open and they don't have all the years of the pile up, up of experiences that we have. So they're really responsive to flower essences. Awesome, wonderful. And um, in, so the from what you've shared so far, I, I feel the flower essences kind of carry an energy. Each essence carries some energy and, you know, uh, would you, um, can this come under energy, energy medicine, energy psychology? I feel like I would put it there in that category because it works on an energetic level. Um, people often mistake flower essences. They'll think I'm talking about essential oils, which are wonderful, but have more of a physical property to them. Mm -hmm. Flower essences are really have no physical property per se. They're more in alignment with homeopathy um, because they're working on a very, very subtle level on the less physical, less um, material level and more on the emotional and spiritual level. But of course, by doing that, they will affect our physical well-being because they're all connected, mm -hmm. but they don't work on the physical, they work more on the energetic level. So I would put them in that category myself. That's a, that's a great explanation because there are so many um, healing modalities out there. So. Uh, I, uh, I, I happened to take a class a few months back on the flower essences and through you, I have been, you were the one who introduced me to flower essences. So I knew, I knew a little bit. So, um, when I took this class, it was very exciting because, um, in homeopathy, there are, if I, if, I, if my understanding is correct, there are like over 5,000 remedies. Whereas in the bark flower system, you have like about 38 essences. And uh, so it's also kind of easy to, choose from um so i that the i thought it's more e there is more ease and simplicity to this system again just with my limited understanding that's what i i, I gathered from the class absolutely and i found i'm not a homeopathist but i know a little bit about it there are really no rules in flower essence uh taking flower essences and homeopathy there are some things you want to avoid um times to take them frequency you don't want to overdose with the homeopathy but the flower essences are so gentle that you really can't do anything wrong with them mm -hmm. and that's why they're so really wonderful for children for instance um, 
they're just really, really gentle. So yeah, yeah, they're, um, yeah, I like what you're saying about that, that simplicity. I have to say, <laughs> Bach was the first, who's the father of flower essence therapy. There are many, many people who produce flower essences now in the world. And I do work with another line, which is the Flower Essence Society that I did training with. I use both. And I have resisted going outside those two um, mm. manufacturers because there's too many and I just get overwhelmed. So I just use these two manufacturers and I find that that repertoire of essences is a beautiful repertoire and covers a lot. And the Bach, I really work with them as my foundation piece. And then I'll add the others on top of that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that information because I think that's going to be very helpful for the audience because as you said, there are so many products out there. It can be confusing even as a practitioner, if it can be overwhelming for, for you, if someone who does not have the uh, knowledge about it, uh, it may overwhelm them. So thank you for sharing that. Um, which brings me to the next question. Um, do you see flower essences as a complement to other healing modalities like when you meant when you shared that you cannot go wrong with flower essences i felt it was like i i say the same thing with tapping mm -hmm. to my clients when i work with them i tell them like you know there's no right or wrong way of tapping um, it was very synonymous with what you shared so uh, do you see this as a complement to other healing do you use this as a complement to other healing modalities or or is it just like a flower essences can be used as a standalone treatment for physical and mental well-being. Yeah, both really. Um, in my practice, I use most of my clients, I will suggest a flower essence remedy for them because it's, to me, it's a no brainer. They're so, they're such a beautiful help for healing and balance of, of really deep issues, sometimes going way back to birth even. Um, they're just, I find them such a support between sessions. So the work we do, let's say an EFT session, um, then to just support those changes in a different way with the flower essences. I, to me, just like, why, <laughs> why wouldn't everybody do that? So I think they're a beautiful complement. And as I said, they're a complement to even physical healing modalities, like, or mainstream, more mainstream modalities, um, because they don't interact negatively with medications or anything like that. But they do also, some of my clients just want flower essences, and then we just work with a remedy. Um, and they're wonderful. They work really well, but given my choice, I would bring in all the tools that I have in my toolbox. Yeah. Right, right. And um, as you said, like when a client comes to a session, uh, you know, you have tapping, you have the other, other, you know, uh, modalities that you're trained in, you, you, you hold the space for them and you give them the physical and emotional support. You provide a healing space, but then as you, as you beautifully said, in between sessions, something like this, uh, you know, can uh, help them to continue with the healing and recovery process, um, you know, depending on what they are dealing with. Um, I see this as a beautiful compliment and like a nice carryover, right, in between. I agree. I the totally. healing work. Yeah. And I, um, some people don't do this as a practice, but I provide affirmations that go with the flowers. Hmm. And it just feels like that work with taking the flower essences. And I recommend to my clients that when they take, ideally you take them about four times a day, you take these few drops in your mouth, just to pause before take, while you're taking it to pause and just bring in your intention for what you want for yourself. Hmm. And that way you're really connecting with that vibrational help that the flowers bring and then if you work with the affirmations at all it's just like this other level of help that's coming through and and I don't know I mean magic is one of my favorite words and I feel like even in a consultation already the flowers are there with us helping that person even before they start taking the remedy they're just they step into the 
mm. to the space and mm. people often feel so much better at the end and i think it's because the flowers come in and their energy's there and they're, they're starting to work already so that's my that's my fairy magic <laughs> medicine so i don't know whether it's true but i like to think that yeah, that's that's beautiful. You know, even when in the class that I took, the 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 instructor who gave the the class, who taught the class, she said like consider these uh, thirty eight uh, essences as angels. You know, just uh, you know chant their names and just call them during uh, even even at a t if you if you feel that you don't have access to if you if you don't have access to the essences. She said like you can even chant and call their names and they would come and help you mm, yeah I love that I love that it's so yeah you know it's wonderful yeah I thought that was so profound so beautiful thank you for sharing that again um so how long does it take for someone uh, who uses who uses the essences to see improvement to yeah. see some shifts yeah of course it's all very personal mm -hmm. but typically about a week into taking it and taking it regularly, that's really important. The flower essences work with frequency, not quantity. Mm -hmm. So taking it this four times a day, having a regular routine, um, usually right when you get up in the morning and before bed, before you go to sleep, and then two times in between. Um, in about a week, people start to, start to feel just a general calming down of whatever the issues were that they came in, the emotions. Um, you just start to feel like, huh, I feel lighter and I feel like I can manage this better. But flower essences work in levels like many healing modalities. So over time, they work deeper and deeper and deeper on um, so the first week is wonderful and you really get that, oh, something's working. And then over time, and I usually work with people over a month period of time, then we do a follow-up at the end of that. Um, there, the shifts are much more, they're, they're deep and you, it comes with insights about where those patterns came from. Um, sometimes you might have a little blip where you, feel like, oh, I was feeling bad. Oh, there it is again. But you have a different insight about it, Come whatever's coming up. Um, but so it's, it's over time, about a month period of time is long enough to feel some shifts. But the shifts are going to be in different, to kind of different quality over that time. So that first week is that, you know, I, I feel something different usually. And people start sleeping better often. Um, and just feel a general easing, um, calming in their system. Wonderful. Um, I also hear that a combination of remedies can be used um, at a time. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's an interesting question. And, and practitioners all, they have different answers to that. Mm -hmm. I personally work with five to seven flower essences at a time in a combination. And when I, when I think about this question, um, there are all these different facets to an issue that someone might come in with, say they have, they're lonely. So we would start to talk about loneliness and when that first started, maybe there was an event that started, maybe they had a loss. So there'd be a flower essence to come in to help with grieving. And then maybe they also were someone who holds back a lot, who is not totally relaxed about being in a group. They're more happy on their own. I mean, they, they feel like I'm kind of a lone wolf. There's an essence for that. They might be lacking confidence. And so there's an essence that would help with, so there are these like a gem, there are all these facets of an experience. And I like to choose the essences that address those different facets. And when chosen well, the essences really kind of are synergistic. They kind of come together as a team and work with each other. So that's how mm -hmm. I see working with several different essences. Um, there are some people who choose to just work with one. 
or two. Um, but I typically five to seven is my number that I work with. And so it's, um, it's personal to the practitioner. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So to the, when the clients come to you, when you give them the, uh, the essences, do you, um, do you ask them to buy it from a certain place or do you customize a formula? Do you make the essences yourself and you give it to them? How they, how they, how they, yeah. Do well, they can certainly go buy them, but um, I have, I don't know how many I have, <laughs> I have lots of them. Mm. Um, and I don't make them myself. I've, I've made a couple of flower essences myself, but I, I have so many other things that I do in my life. I let that, let that be the manufacturer. They, they do a beautiful job of making essences. So I put together a customized bottle mm -hmm. and um, I do a little prayer and kind of pot potentizing, I guess that's the word, like I hold it and I kind of pray over it for the intention I have for them. So um, I hope that's a help. I, I think it is. It just kind of feels a little bit more like it gives a little bit of extra something to that bottle. It's a big help. It's a big help, you know, holding the intention of healing and, you know, making the, you know, the client feel better. It's, it's a big help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for sharing that again, Christine. Um, again, uh, next comes, brings me to the question of, uh, can you share some of your success stories with clients using flower essences? Yes. I can. Um, I was looking back through my notes thinking about this and I have some animal stories, but I think I'll stick with the people today. Okay. Um, I had a woman a couple of years ago, let's see, it's 20. Yeah, she got in touch with me in 2021 and she was um, having some issues with her one and a half year old daughter. She had had her in 2019, but right before the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And she had another daughter who was five or six. And of course the pandemic turned everything upside down. And she had had a fairly traumatic birth with this second little girl and was feeling ever since the birth had felt a little disconnected from the second daughter. I mean, there was a loving household, there wasn't any blaring big things, but she just felt disconnected from her and not like she did the first one, her first daughter. And then at one and a half, the little girl was, had she had weaned her and she was really clingy. She was afraid to be without her mom and could not be left with anybody else, not the dad, not anybody and was having a lot of anger, um, couldn't regulate her emotions very well, and um, was quite anxious. And my client was exhausted and overwhelmed. And I, I knew part of it was the pandemic, which was just so demanding on everybody. So what I worked, I gave both of them a remedy. And I think she might have put it in juice or her bottle. I can't remember how she gave it to her daughter. You can drop it on food or whatever. Um, each of them got a remedy with different essences in it. Some were the same. I gave the, my client some essences for exhaustion, for trauma from the birth, um, some for getting, kind of bringing her energy back into quiet inside because she felt really like she'd never really gotten herself back from that birth. And one really beautiful essence, which is not in the Bach line, but it is in my, the other line I work with, Mariposa Lily, which is for anything to do with mother, mm. any issues to do with the, your own mother or mothering mm. and being able to receive nurturing. Okay. So I put that in her remedy. And then the little girl, I gave her essences for super sensitivity because she was a highly sensitive little girl mm -hmm. and she was kind of getting, she was so sensitive to the input coming in that she was reacting. So gave her some essences for her sensitivity to build up her resilient kind of protective shield. Mm -hmm. um, I gave her one for the clinginess, which is a beautiful essence chicory 
for helping us to feel we're whole in ourselves. We don't need the others to fill that space in us. And another essence for calming the emotions, just staying calm. And then I also gave her the Mariposa Lily for the mother, helping with the mother. And then two months later, I heard back from my client and she said things had totally changed. She was just like, those issues are like a thing of the past now. Um, the little girl was open and curious and able to engage with others. She was very, she said she could regulate her emotions really well. And my client said the most amazing thing was my client could feel this little girl and sense what she needed and really see her in a way she couldn't before when she felt that disconnect. So that was a really lovely story about how the flower essences can help. Um, that's a good one, I love that one. Um, I have one more. I thought sure, we have please. time. Sure, um, please do. <laughs> one woman I saw for several years, I started to see her when she was caregiving her husband. And he was in probably the last several months of his life. And she was exhausted, which of course goes with caregiving and had a lot of emotions coming up around caregiving and the kind of the ones we expect like overwhelm and some anger coming up sometimes at having to do this and um, guilt for feeling angry, which often is the case. Um, so I gave her some essences for that time and she was able to be more calm around him and feel more grounded and not so reactive. And it helped with her energy so that she had this resilience to go through that experience. And then um, she came back to me after he had passed away and we, I gave her a remedy for grieving and for some guilt for things she thought she should have done differently. Um, can't remember all the essences, but definitely a lot about the loss, processing that loss. And then after that remedy, um, she was wanting to reinvent herself. She, that was maybe, maybe a, a six months to a year later. She just wanted to get back to her own work and she was feeling a lot of anxiety at that point. Mm. So I gave her essences for anxiety and confidence because she'd been out of the workforce for a while. And the one essence I really feel like made a difference was one to allow her to let go. This is a beautiful essence for allowing our loved ones to be on their journey. Mm. And that essence, I felt like that essence and that remedy really turned the corner for her in her anxiety. Mm. And about a few months later, it wasn't that long later, mm. she happened to run into a dear friend from many years before and um, they struck up a relationship. And this was this lovely, unexpected, new love in her life. Uh, when she was ready, she felt ready. Um, so that was a really, I just felt like the whole process of helping her through each of those stages. Um, she also stepped back into her work more. It was just a lovely process seeing her be able to go through these life stages that we all may go through. We probably most of us will go through some of those. Um, so yeah, that was another nice, nice story. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Christine. So from what you're saying, like, you know, these essences can come and um, help us, you know, during times of grief, trauma, you know, with uh, tapping work, we see a lot of trauma sometimes. And uh, um, again, for fears and phobias, I see the essences as, um, I, first, first of all, I see this as a great compliment to any healing modality. And even if you're not going through any healing modality, you, you are you go through like you're like a um, go to western medicine but still this can be added as a great compliment yeah. and i see the essences as a vehicle for uh, you know our healing journey and recovery no matter what 
we have gone through, you know, built layers, as you said, over the past. This mm-hmm. can really help us uncover and really loosen up and brighten um, our soul and our, our life, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, beautifully put. I absolutely feel that way. And um, yeah, my only problem for myself is that's why I see a practitioner. There, are, I love them all. And every day I think I need that. I need that one. I need that one. And then I'm taking too many. So it's mm-hmm. always good to for, for a practitioner to go to that practitioner. Right, right, exactly. That 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 was going to be my next question. So, um, what is the pr- process that you use if a client, um, you know, comes to you? How do you choose the essences for a client? Do you have do you, is there like a questionnaire that you give them? Um, is there like an interview process? How do you work with your clients? Yeah, um, I use I just use a consultation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we just meet, we meet for about 45 minutes and I just ask them what, what they'd like help with, what's going on. And then we just start, I just start to ask questions about when this began, what, how it's manifesting because the essence is, for example, if someone's feeling fear, there are two essences that are good for fear in the Bach flower system. One is for known fears. So you can really identify it like public speaking, flying on an airplane, Mm. your first day of school. Those are known specific fears. Mm. And the other one, Aspen is the other one. The first is Mimulus. Aspen is for unknown fears, kind of like that. Uh, Maybe if you have some anxiety, but you don't know if it's connected to anything. Mm. Aspen can be good for nightmares. Um, just that kind of mm, something's off and I feel uneasy and I feel afraid, but I don't know what it's about fear of the unknown. So in a, in a, the consultation, we, we want to look at how an emotion manifests itself. Um, what it's, what its roots are. Um, it really helps to point the direction to the right essence um, so it's 45 minutes, we talk, I ask questions, flowers will pop up in a session into my mind. I usually have my books there and I'll look in the book and I might read the description to the person and see if they resonate with it. So they're really part of that process. And then at the end, we usually have four or five at least essences And then afterwards, sometimes one or two more will pop into my awareness and I'll just tune into the person and feel into the combination, see if that's a nice addition to um, the the remedy that I put together. And then I put it together. I do a little prayer over it. I send it to them with the affirmations and the qualities of each flower, because I feel like it's important to know what they're working on. Right. right. And then they take that for about three weeks to a month. They take the remedy and then we do a follow-up call that's usually 20 minutes long. And the follow-up call is really important Mm. because many shifts may have happened, but Mm. they could be very subtle. And until you get the spotlight on them, they'll Mm. just feel like, Ah, uh, you know, I think in EFT, we have that too. It's just, that isn't a problem anymore. I don't even remember that. <laughs> right, right. So good to huh. have a follow-up, definitely. Wow, how exciting. Uh, so during the follow-up, do you also feel that the client has uh, shifted and uh, do you sometimes recommend other, other essences? Mm-hmm, definitely. I prefer to work with people from a month to three months long at the minimum because all most of the issues have unless your children who have less a pile up of events mm-hmm. or a pet um, most issues have layers like an onion mm-hmm. so i love the, the this is the example i give a lot you may give someone centauri which is for being able to say no and set boundaries And after a month, they're really beginning to be able to do that, but they feel so guilty when they do. (laughs) And so guilt, oh, that's the next layer there. Or they might feel resentful for all the years they never said no. 
So there's another layer to be looked at and then given flower essences for. So I feel like having some time to work with people is really important. Beautiful, beautiful, Christine. Um, so then could you talk about talk a little bit about the rescue remedy, which seems to be very popular and more and more people are knowing about this. So uh, what is the rescue remedy and how can it be used? Yeah. Well, rescue remedy is a combination that Bach, Dr. Bach came up with. He created it and it's five flower essences. And this is an example of how these essences work synergistically with each other. They are really mm -hmm. in beautiful relationship with each other. There's five in it and it's used for acute uh, situations, emergencies, um, acute stress of any kind. Um, it's not gonna be used typically long-term. It's really for this is happening right now and I need to feel calmer and more just bring my energy back to here. Um, so some of the essences in it, well, there's one for trauma and there's one for terror, which is not something we typically feel all the time. Uh, it's something in the moment where we just feel, oh, we're so shaky and like it's a big thing that's just happened. Uh, another essence in the rescue remedy is for um, feeling spacey, but also that disconnected when we can just kind of feel like we're not in our body, that it's just helping to bring us back into our body. Yeah. So this formula really helps reground us when we've had a shaky event. Um, but it can also be good for exam nerves or public speaking. Um, I put it on our dog's ears yesterday. She got spayed and she came back and I knew it had been a trauma. So I didn't want to give her the straight, um, most of the essences are put in alcohol. So I just rubbed it on her ears instead. I didn't want to give it to her. And I put it in her water too. Um, but it's used for these acute, uh, maybe a nightmare. I think if a child woke up with a nightmare, you could put it on their wrists. You wouldn't give the alcohol to the child either. Um, so it's, I think it's so popular because you don't have to figure out what to give. You mm. just... You know, you don't have to go through your 38 essences. You just have that bottle and you know you can take it. And in these times, probably rescue remedy is really important because there's so many people are, you know, have a lot going on. Yes, yes. <laughs> again, that, again, thank you for explaining that so nicely. And um, any final thoughts um, that you want to share? Any final thoughts, comments, and your experiences about the essences and also... Mm -hmm please share how audience can reach out to you if they want to contact you for the, um, a consultation. Wonderful. Um, boy, my final thoughts. I think the flower essence should be in the water, <laughs> in the general, <laughs> like municipal water. I think I wish more people knew about them. I feel Dr. Bach created this system in the middle of World War I and the depression where the world was really in a big crisis. And we've certainly seen our share of crises, probably will continue. He saw a need that, it, and he, he really felt the calling of bringing peace and harmony to mankind and knew it was possible. And if we all could have the benefit of that, I just think the world would be so different and it would just it would change everything so i love that you're doing this because getting the word out about them is just so important it's really important peace um, and harmony i love that you know who wouldn't want that right all of us want that and that's what we are striving for each and every day <laughs> yeah that's right yes and as we know when we're in that space then we can give to others and serve yeah. and um the world needs that right now so yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, my contact information my website is embrace your radiant truth uh, dot com and my email is christine at embrace your radiant truth so those are you can go to my website take a look around at the things i do and 
um, reach me through the website or just email me at Christine at Embrace Your Radiant Truth. Awesome, Christine. I will make sure that I put your put the links uh, in the description along with the video. Thank you again for taking the time and sharing your knowledge and wisdom with me and the audience. And as you said, the world really needs peace and harmony. And um, please reach out to Christine if you want a bark flower uh, consultation for, for the bark flower essences or for tapping. She's an awesome practitioner. Thank you again, Christine. Thank it you. It was a pleasure chatting with you. <laughs> Just a second, let's see.